Uh, hello everyone, welcome back to the second video. So I believe you have watched the first video uh, made by Adam Satanino. He already uh, made an introduction in uh, about the about this talk, and he may have talk about talk about the motivations and the theorems we proved in our preprint. Now in the second video, I will try to prove some of the results. Uh, uh, in our paper, and uh, I believe uh, I hope I can give uh, some detailed uh, idea uh, proof for the to these theorems. So the main purpose of this talk is to give a proof to the following uh, theorem. So uh, let sigma be a non-compact capillary surface immersed in a half space of R three at a constant angle theta. And if we assume the H sigma times cosine theta is non-negative, then sigma is weakly stable uh, if and only if it is a half plane. So uh, the theorem I put here is slightly stronger than the one we proved in our preprint. And that one uh, we proved has the same conditions, but the conclusion says the sigma is strongly stable if and only if it is a half flame. So the difference is that uh, we only need now weekly stability here. Uh, I will explain uh, the difference here and why, uh, why the theorem here is stronger than the one uh, below. But first, I would like to review some uh, classical results uh, in the history uh, that talks about uh, stability of complete minimal surface uh, surfaces and CMC surfaces. So the first one that has to be mentioned is proved by Fishkovo and Shin in 1982. So they proved that a complete stable uh, minimal surface in R3 must be a plan. So here they consider surfaces, uh, minimal surfaces without boundary. Uh, if it is complete, um, it must be non-compact uh, minimal surface in R3, okay? And let me remind you that when we see a minimal surface sigma uh, is strongly stable, uh, if, the, if any function u that has compact support, uh, we have this uh, inequality uh, below. So this quadratic form Q uh, is not negative, okay? So uh, this quadratic form comes from the second variation of the area function. And another result that needs to be mentioned is proved by uh, De Severio in 1987. So he proved that a non-compact co complete weakly stable CMC surface in R3 must be a plan, okay? Uh, so here the CMC, we see CMC surface sigma is weakly stable if for any uh, function U that has compact support and has a zero integration uh, on the support, we have the following inequality, okay? So the difference between these two definitions is that the weak stability uh, 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 needs extra condition that the function u you use uh, has to have uh, zero integration. So um, that means the strong stability is, uh, is a slightly bit stronger than the weak stability, okay? And that means if you look at the theorem proved by Dasiverio, and when the CMC surface has uh, in culture zero, this theorem, the second theorem is actually uh, stronger than, their, than the theorem proved by fish cognition because it needs a uh, weak condition, okay? So this also explains, uh, somehow explains why uh, the new theorem here is stronger than the theorem proved in the preprint. Okay. Now, uh, this results uh, 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 
for the surfaces without boundary. Now we want to uh, move to the surfaces uh, with boundary. And we, we want to discuss the stability uh, with boundary. Uh, first, I would like to recall uh, that a capillary surface in a half space uh, at a con contact angle theta is weakly stable if the quadratic form Q uh, is not negative. So this quadratic form uh, is not negative for, uh, for all those function U that has compact support and has zero integration uh, on the support. So this quadratic form, uh, if you have watched the first video, it also comes from uh, a second variation of a functional, uh, but it's not a, a area functional, it's actually a, a energy function. So the interior integration is actually same as before, but now we have a boundary integration. So when the theta is fixed angle, cotangent theta is a constant, and a sigma eta eta is the second final form of the surface in the direction of eta. Okay, so um, so this term a sigma eta eta uh, doesn't have a definite sign along the boundary of sigma, so that might cause trouble in our proof. Uh, so please keep that in mind. And if we drop this actual condition that U has zero integration, um, then we say uh, sigma uh, is strongly stable as before. So with this definition, now let's get back to our uh, main theorem. So in order to prove the main theorem, we need to prove two directions, right? And one direction is actually straightforward because a half plane in half space is always weakly stable. Uh, since a uh, half plane has a uh, zero second final form, then the quadratic form Q just reduces to this energy function and which is always non-negative for any test function uh, that has compact support you plug in, okay? And for the other direction, uh, we need to show that uh, weakly stability implies the surface is a half plane. So all we need to do uh, is to prove this uh, implication here. And that's what we're gonna do in the next uh, 11 pages of slides. Uh, and for the proof of this direction, uh, there are some um, particular uh, cases which has a uh, simpler, simpler proof. For example, when the angle theta is pi over two and when sigma is strongly stable. So it is a strongly stable free boundary CMC surface in a half space of R3. Uh, then we can just do a reflection, okay? Because the, surf the space is a half space of R3, we can, uh, when we reflect the surface, we get a a uh, sigma hat that is strongly stable uh, CMC surface in R3. Uh, uh, the reason it is st still st strongly stable because the quadratic form remains same. Okay, since the boundary of the boundary integral uh, disappear. Okay. Then by the result from Fischer-Coburn, uh, Shane and De Severio, we can we know that sigma hat is a plan then the original surface sigma uh, must be a uh, must be a half plane. Right? However, for other cases, when the angle, for example, when the angle is not pi over two or sigma is a weakly stable, this reflection uh, analysis doesn't really work, and we have to uh, come up with some other ideas. And the, for the so for the proof of other cases, we have three steps. Uh, so the first step, we want to show that the weakly stable capillary surface uh, have finite topology, okay? In fact, uh, we show that the finite index capillary surface has finite topology. So that's the first step. And in the second step, we want to understand more about the lower index situations. So we want to show that the lower index uh, is equivalent to 
uh, a low topology. Then in the third step, uh, we actually construct a proper test function so that we, when we plug it, the test function u into the quadratic form, we can conclude that the surface has a simple geometry, okay? not only simple topology, also has a simple geometry. It's actually uh, a plan. Okay. So now let's get let's get into the proof. And the first step is involves the following theorem. You may have seen this uh, in in the first video. So uh, let M be an oriented Riemannian three manifold with smooth boundary, and let sigma be a non-compact capillary surface. Uh, with finite index uh, immersed in M at a constant angle theta. So uh, you, let me remind you uh, what is a uh, finite index here. So it simply means that you, you have a, a finite dimensional subspace of function space on the surface in which uh, when you deform the surface uh, with the speed function coming from the subspace the, the energy, the quadratic form Q is always negative, okay? So, uh, so that's the rough definition for this finite index. Then furthermore, if we assume that the scalar curvature plus the mean curvature square is not negative and one of the following condition holds. So either the boundary is compact or the boundary mean curvature plus the mean curvature of the surface times cosine theta is not negative along the boundary of the surface when the boundary is non-compact, okay? Then we can show that the surface is conformally equivalent to a compact surface, uh, sigma e bar with boundary and punctured at finite many points. So these punctures could be, uh, could have uh, interior punctures or, or boundary punctures. And each puncture is associated to an end of the surface. So the end means just means outside a compact subset, you have uh, disjoint components of the surface. Okay. And if the puncture is from the interior point, then we can just simply call it the interior end. And if if the end is associated to the uh, boundary puncture, we can just call it a boundary end. Okay. Furthermore, we show the following uh, inequality that is uh, of independent of interest. Um, now, when the ambient space M is half space of R3 in particular, the condition in red just reduces to the to the this condition uh, we have uh, seen in the main theory. Okay. So now let's. Uh, give uh, a rough uh, detailed proof to this uh, theorem. So the first step is that the finite index implies strongly stable outside uh, a compact subset C. So this is kind of a standard uh, in the history that the, the proof for this statement is uh, that if you fix a point on the surface and when you increase it, the radius we increase the radius of the geodesic disk, you're kind of picking the index because it has only finite index. At some radius, you have to be you have to stop. Okay. Then outside the geodesic disk, the surface has to be strongly stable. So then the strong stability implies this quadratic form Q uh, is not negative. Okay. For any function V that has compact support. Then note that the function Q here uh, is actually equal to this uh, term, the summation here. And by the summation of the theorem, this summation is not negative, then uh, it's greater or equal to uh, negative kappa partial sigma. So this kappa partial sigma denotes the geodesic curvature of the uh, of this boundary of the surface. Then we have the falling inequality. Right? 
So we just uh, reduces the above inequality to the following one. Then by a standard argument, we can construct a positive function B in the complement of the C, a complement of C, such that it satisfies the following uh, uh, PDs. So in the interior, uh, JV is equal to two zero, is equal to two zero. So J is the Jacobi operator, uh, uh, as you can uh, review it in the first video. And along the boundary, uh, partial, uh, partial V uh, nu is the normal, uh, eta is the uh, normal derivative. Uh, it, uh, it plus the kappa partial sigma times V is zero. Uh, re, uh, note that the function V is positive only in the complement of C uh, because it's uh, only defined uh, in the complement of C. But we can extend the function V globally so to the whole surface uh, sigma. So the extension here only needs it to be positive in the whole surface sigma and satisfy this boundary condition uh, along the boundary of sigma. So in the interior of C, uh, we don't need to be, uh, we don't need the function V to satisfy uh, this equation, okay? So we can always do that extension. Then with this function V, we can construct a new metric D as tidal square. Uh, that is just V square multiply uh, uh, times D S square. So this is uh, a new metric. Now, if we look at the surface, the new, this new surface, we have we know that first, the Gaussian curvature is not negative outside a compact subset, and the geodesic curvature is always zero along the boundary of the surface. And secondly, we know that this new surface is complete, so it means that if any geodesic coming from uh, any point either hits the boundary in finite time or it exists for infinite uh, time. Okay. And since the, the geodesic culture is zero along the boundary, we can double the surface to get a complete surface sigma a bar that has a C2 metric. Okay, so the, the surface is smooth and the metric is C2. Okay. The metric it may not be smooth, but it, it, it is C2. Then by Huber's theorem, we know that this sigma e bar has uh, finite topology. Okay, so it's finite connected. So finite connectedness means that the surface is a homeomorphic to uh, a compact surface with punctures. Okay. Then by the arguments from Fishkubel uh, and Shen's paper, that we can prove uh, the the punctures the end of the surface is either conformally equivalent to a punctured disk or a punctured half disk, okay? So this is basically the proof, idea of the proof for the first part. And for the second part, uh, for the proof of the, this inequality, we can apply the similar idea, okay? We can construct a positive Jacobi function U uh, satisfying the following two uh, equations. So the only difference is now here along the boundary, uh, we have minus Q here. It's not, so it's not plus, uh, plus kappa partial sigma, okay. But the, the, the proof is similar. Then we look at the new surface and by the conformal change of the metric, we can prove that uh, key hat, kappa, uh, the Gaussian curvature is not negative and the geodesic culture is not negative. Then we use conversal theorem with boundary. Uh, we know that the integration of our k hat plus integration of kappa hat uh, is finite. Then we get this inequality, okay? So this is the proof of this, the first theorem. And it has, this theorem has an interesting uh, corollary that was to be uh, mentioned, that is, if sigma is a compact, non-compact cavity surface in half space of R3 at a constant angle theta. And if we assume that H sigma 
times cosine zeta is non-negative and the sigma has a finite index, then sigma must be minimal. So it simply means that if you have a non-compact, uh, non-minimal uh, CMC uh, surface in half space, then it must have infinite index, okay? So the proof of this corollary uh, is kind of simple. Uh, it, it, needs, uh, in, it needs the inequality from the previous theorem, right? So this inequality just reduces to this one when the ambient space is R3, okay? Now, we just need this statement that non-compact CMC surface has infinite area, okay? So if the surface has infinite area, H sigma must be zero. Otherwise, this inequality uh, cannot hold. Then the statement for this, uh, the proof for this statement, uh, non-compact CMC surface has infinite area. It's kind of, has been used a lot in the history. Uh, so the rough idea for this statement is that you can construct uh, a geodesic on the surface with infinite length, and you can choose a sequence of points along the geodesic. Then you can construct disjoint uh, geodesic disks, uh, disks along the geodesic centered at, at those points. And because of monotonicity formula for CMC surface, uh, each disk has area bounded below uh, by a fixed constant. So the submission would the submission of this uh, uh, of of these disks have uh, infinite area. Then the surface has uh, infinite area. Okay, so this is the rough idea. Now let's move to the second step. We have understand the case when the surface has a finite index. Now, can we? no more when the surface has zero index, right? And then we have the following theorem. So the condition is uh, pretty, uh, is basically similar as before, uh, except now we ask the surface to have a uh, zero index. Then we show that the surface, the compactification sigma uh, a bar is actually a disk, a topological disk. And the ends of the surface can only have following three uh, possibilities. So the first one is the surface has two boundary ends and no interior ends. And the second one is the surface has no boundary ends and uh, has only a single uh, interior end. And the third case is that the surface has an interior, uh, has a single boundary end, but no, but no interior ends. And in particular, if the first one, the second one holds, the sur surface sigma must be uh, totally geodesic. And the scalar curvature of the ambient manifold is zero along the surface. And the boundary mean curvature of the mean curvature of the boundary menu uh, of the boundary of the ambient manifold is zero along the boundary of the surface. Okay. So this this is the rigidity uh, result. Uh, so I would like I would not um, give a detailed proof for this theorem, but I'd like to give some examples to uh, each possibility. So the first pos the first case is that is the, when M is a slab in R3 and sigma is a, a infinite flat strip in, in, the, in this slab meeting the boundary at a constant angle theta. Okay, as you can see from this picture, so this surface is has the surface red in red has zero index, and it is topological disk with two boundary ends, uh, two uh, no interior end. Okay. And second case is that when M is a, a is a product space, S one cross R plus cross R, and we can just take the totally geodesic surface sigma. S1 cross R plus, as you can see from this picture. So this is because it's totally geodesic, it's actually uh, has zero index, okay? But this surface is topologically, all right? It's a, a half cylinder. So it has a interior end and uh, one uh, boundary end, okay? And third case is uh, 
uh, half plan in a half space. So you can imagine this is the upper half space of R3 and the surface is uh, half plan intersecting the, uh, the boundary of the half space at, at a constant angle theta. So this surface is has a zero index and it is topology disk and with one boundary punctures, one, one boundary puncture. Okay. So each possibility in this uh, theorem can occur. Now uh, let's move to, so we have understand the, uh, the, low, the index zero case. Now let's move on to the uh, third step. We want to give a detailed proof uh, to this uh, to this claim that weak stability of a uh, non-compact capillary surface in in, uh, in half space implies the surface uh, must be a uh, half plane. So on the contrary, right? We can we can assume that the surface is non-flat but it is weakly stable capillary surface in the half space, okay? Then the claim just follows, if we can construct a compact supported piecewise smooth function U satisfying the following two equations, right? So it has zero integration on sigma, okay? It is compactly supported and it is piecewise smooth and the quadratic form is negative. So this will violate the weak, weak stability, right? So basically uh, we are constructing a counter example. Then the proof just reduces to the construction of such function, okay? And I would like to split the construction into a uh, few steps. So the first step is to is understand the structure of the surface, right? So as we have proved that outside a compact subset, okay? The surface has a uh, finite interior end and finite boundary ends, right? So without loss of generality, we can just assume that the surface has uh, L interior ends and uh, K minus L uh, uh, boundary ends, okay? And the compact subset uh, inside this red curve, red surface, is uh, just a sigma naught. And we know the conformal structure, right? We know that interior ends are conformally equivalent to a, uh, a, a half cylinder with product, the standard product metric. And the boundary ends are conformally equivalent to the uh, semi half cylinders with the product metric. And we can just use the standard coordinates on these uh, cylinders. And, the, and we can do all the calculations uh, on the cylinders because in dimension two, this energy is uh, conformally equivalent. So eventually we can transform all the calculation uh, in the coordinates of theta and y. Uh, since the surface is not flat, right? We assume it's non flat. That means uh, the second final form doesn't vanish identically. Then the integration of a square over sigma naught is a fixed constant. Uh, it's a non zero constant. And then we can choose R such that this the following inequality hold, that's always doable, okay? Uh, let me remind you, L is the number of interior ends, and K is the number of all ends, okay? Then we want to construct a family of functions uh, on the end, okay? So uh, in each end, we construct a piecewise smooth, uh, piecewise differentiable function uh, as you can see from this uh, picture, uh, it's Lipschitz function, right? So, uh, so the, 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 the equations for, 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 the, for the graph uh, is written here. 
and all we just need care about, take look at this graph okay um and the coordinates for this graph is y because we are a uh, constructed function in the end so we can just use the coordinates on the uh on the uh, half cylinder then we can construct a function phi on the whole surface sigma okay that depends on a okay and such that the function is one in the compact subset uh, sigma naught and phi is phi i in each end okay so then this phi a basically uh, is a compact supported piecewise differentiable function on the whole surface sigma, okay, which only has slope uh, in this region and in this region. Okay. Then we consider the following function u that involves angle theta and the normal derivative nu of the surface and E3. So E3 is just a zero, zero, a vector, uh, union vector zero, zero, one because we can just assume that the half space is the up half space of R3, okay? Then we can prove that there actually exists a naught bigger than zero, such that the following equation holds. So U times phi A naught actually has their integration. Okay, so that's uh, roughly, that's the, the proof for that claim is, is just, shown in, in this picture. So you can increase A, right? Because the surface has infinitely long end, you can just increase A. So you have a negative, more negative area here, right? Yeah. And because U has a low, positive lower bound. So uh, that's always doable. But uh, this, this, this is just rough proof uh, that we need more uh, rigorous uh, arguments for this claim. Uh, you can find it in our paper. Uh, then this multiplication of u uh, and phi a naught is actually our new test function. So we just need to make sure that this test function, when you, when you plug in this new test function into quadratic form, you get a negative uh, quadratic form. So that's what we need to show. And there's one more thing we need to uh, to know that this function u, the reason we, we, we choose this function u here is that it satisfies the following two equations, okay? And more importantly, it satisfies this equation along the boundary, okay? Then when we plug in, uh, oh, I think I missed here, this should be u times phi a naught, okay? So when you plug in u, uh, times phi a naught into quadratic form Q, uh, then you get this equation. So the interesting thing here is uh, uh, the original the original quadratic form Q has a boundary integration, but when you plug in U times phi a naught, you only have the integration, uh, interior integration on sigma. Okay? The reason is because the function U satisfy uh, this equation. Okay, that, so that's the key part of the proof. Then you, you can continue to uh, simplify this equation because U has, you can see that U has a positive lower bound, uh, a positive uh, upper bound two over sine theta. So you get this uh, equation. And as I mentioned, as I said before, you can just calculate this, uh, this uh, gradient Right in the region of the in the region of uh, of the surface when the graph has a has a slope. So the slope is just one over r uh, here. Okay, and you have uh, n ends, so you can just sum them all. And u here uh, they has a lower bound. Okay, so you get this uh, equation. Then you can just use the conformal invariance in dimension two. And you can calculate the the energy here in the in the cylinder, right? So you can calculate the area of the cylinder times the slope, square of slope, and times number of L interior ends and number of uh, boundary ends. 
So I think here should be n should be k. There's a typo here. So uh, then you can simplify this uh, uh, this equation here. You get this uh, subtraction here. Uh, then you can easily see that this equation is negative because originally we choose R to satisfy this equation. So once we choose this R, we fix R in the whole construction. Then when you simplify this, okay, this equation here, you will say uh, it's negative, okay? So basically we construct a function uh, u, uh, actually u in our proof is u times phi a naught that satisfy these two equations, okay? Then the, that's a contradiction. So that means if it is weakly stable, it has to have, it has to have uh, uh, ident identical uh, uh, zero uh, second fundamental form along the surface. So it has to be uh, plan. So that's the, uh, the 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 proof of the main theorem. So that's all. Uh, thank you. Bye.